from beautiful Wrigley Field in Chicago, Illinois, you're watching Reversing the Curse with special musical appearances by Mike Ditka, Dick Vitale, Dennis Franz, and Ronnie Wu Wu. Special appearances by Kabasher Bonnie Manic, Gary Pressy and his magical organ, the sexiest weatherman on TV, Tom Skilling, and Daisy the Live Donkey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host for today's show, Paul Conrad and the Steve Stone Dancers. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Conrad, and those were the Steve Stone Dancers. Thank you, ladies. Uh, we are going to reverse the curse on the Chicago Cubs. In a half-hour special that promises to just to turn your life around, we're going to show you everything that needs to happen in order for the Cubs to win the World Series this year. If you're not familiar with the curse, here's a little bit about it. Holy cow! Oh, to have been alive in the early days. A Cub paradise. 1876, the very first year the Chicago National League Ball Club exists, they win the pennant. In 1880, 81, and 82, they go right back to the World Series. After a brief drought, the Cubs returned to the World Series in 1906 and won back-to-back -back World Championships in 1907 and 1908. In 1916, more good news. The Cubs move into Wrigley Field, and Cubs owner Charles Wegman is the first owner in baseball to allow fans to keep foul balls. In 1918, the Cubs are back in the World Series. In 1929, back in the World Series. In 1932, the Cubs won the World Series against the Yankees. In 1935, the Cubs won 21 straight games and go to the World Series against the Tigers. In 1938, the Cubs were in the World Series. And in 1945, tragedy strikes. In the seventh game of the World Series between the Cubs and the Detroit Tigers, William Cianis a goat lover, is told that he cannot bring his lucky goat Murphy into Wrigley Field, even though he had a ticket for the goat. Cub owner P.K. Wrigley told Cianis to take his stinking goat and go home. Cianis was so offended he put a curse on the Cubs, stating they would never win a World Series unless Wrigley apologized to his goat. The apology has never happened, and since then the Cubs haven't made it back to the series. Today, some 50, 40 years later, the curse still lingers. In 1984, the Cubs asked Sam Sienis, the nephew of William and owner of the Billy Goat Tavern, to bring his goat out to Wrigley and to help them win the pennant. He did, but there was still no apology from the Cubs, and as you know, the Cubs lost. Sam himself is a Cubs fan and would love to see the curse reversed, but says it's in the hands of the Cubs. Now, you may say you don't believe in curses. Well, look at the numbers. Prior to 1945, the Cubs won on average 58% of their games each year. After the curse, the Cubs have only won on average 46% of their games. And if that's not enough for you, prior to the curse, the Cubs went to the World Series on average once every five years. Since the Billy Goat curse, they haven't made it to the big game once. They average making it into the playoffs once every 17 years. Is this a coincidence or a real hex? Well, we may never know, but we do know that if this is true, we need to reverse the curse. So you would think it'd be really simple to reverse this curse. All that needs to happen was for PK to apologize to the goat for calling it stinky. Well, he dies in 1981. The Wrigley family sells the Cubs to the Tribune Company, the same company I work for. So I think, all right, the Cubs can then now very easily apologize to the goat for PK calling it stinky. The curse is reversed. The Cubs win the World Series. Well, I asked the Cubs if they would apologize to the goat on behalf of PK Wrigley. Their official response was, no comment. That response left it all in my lap for me to figure out how to apologize on behalf of the Tribune Company to the GOAT. The only thing I could think of to reverse the curse was to try to get Sam Cianis to understand where the Tribune-owned Cubs were coming from. So, I took the Tribune Company's stinking donkey over to Sam's restaurant, hoping to get some sympathy out of him while potentially reversing the curse. we got to turn this curse around and go in, have a burger or two, and then we got to get out of there before management shows up. Sam was elated. He loves donkeys, and he was the most welcoming host. Come on. Yeah. 
Now just cast away anything that you need to cast away here. Me and this donkey circled the place and met some real nice customers. We both apologized to the stinking goat. Take a look. Right there, this is the trouble. This is where the trouble began, right there. And we were on our way. I even made sure that the door hit me in the proverbial buttocks on the way out. Now that that's taken care of, look out, World Series, here we come. Coming up, Tom Skilling on oh, La Nina, El Nino, and the Cubs. <laughs> Plus, the players haven't been the only ones huffing and puffing at spring trading this year. 1999 should prove to be a demanding year for the Wrigley Field beer vendors as well. Are they in shape? Can they go the distance? Stay right there, monkey man. The answers come pouring in after this. My dentist says this gum is working, cleaning dirty plaque. Gets teeth whiter, too. Uh, whiter teeth, kissable brat. Arm & Hammer gum with baking soda reduces plaque up to 25% and gets teeth whiter. This gum does it all. I knew that. Arm & Hammer gum. Looking for a new way to spice up your boneless, skinless chicken? Now there's an exciting new shake and bake made specifically for boneless, skinless chicken. Its specially seasoned coating seals in the juices for mouth-watering flavor like you've never tasted before. New shake and bake for boneless, skinless chicken. It really shakes up chicken. How do moms prevent trash disasters? Some kind of sixth sense? Like what tells them Glad kitchen bags are the way to go? The dependable plastic? Glad's quick tie flaps? Or is it just instinct? Moms who know, know Glad. It's the oven torch. Think of the tips. Right, pizza boy! Everybody in the pizza business is looking for a way to deliver oven fresh pizza. Domino's Heat Wave. It's like a portable oven for the best tasting Domino's ever. Get two medium, two topping pizzas and a two liter bottle of Coke for $13.99. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. You know, uh, reversing the curse can sometimes really be rather ugly, but uh, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. I have here a couple of uh, pig's tails, they're smoked, uh, and a pair of women's pantyhose. And in the old days, this is the way they used to reverse curses. I pretty much filled this uh, pair of pantyhose up with about three and a half pounds of pig's tails. And uh, what you do is you then spin it over your head for approximately two minutes, and that should reverse any curse that might be here at Wrigley Field. While I do some spinning, I want you to watch this next story. It's about the senior citizens here at Wrigley who happen to be your ushers as well. They're the Chicago Cubs senior ushers. They're rugged, bristly, and lovable. A collection of humanity with names like Lois, Oli, Ruth, and Bunny. They'll help you find your seat and make sure you enjoy the game. We're like a family. We care about each other. We care about the Cubs. We care about the ballpark. They're also the first line of defense between Cubs fans and Cub players. They're a gaggle of tough cookies, like 80-year-old Pete Stitch. We don't go into the physical stuff uh, at all. Uh -huh. Once in a while, we may get pushed around, but uh, there's people here that take care of them, and they, they don't mess around. Pete, like the rest of the crew, is scrappy. They've all been knocked around and hit by foul balls. Well, I've been pushed around. Got black and blue, yeah. and I've been knocked off of my stool several times as people went for a foul ball. Yeah. And I've been hit, and I've been near me where they 
tape and try to get the ball to be silver beer and whatnot and yeah. to try to get over the, the uh, seat. They knocked me over the seat. Where were you hit? On my arm. Not too bad, no. It's just a glancing ball that... 78-year-old Emily Hitsky was recruited through her church to start ushering at Wrigley 11 years ago. She's gotten used to some of the rougher fans. Do they ever call you names? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> Not real pleasant. Ones really? A uh, lovely lady like yourself. <laughs> well, they don't consider Some pretty bad ones? <laughs> Well, not too nice, let's yeah. put it that way. The one yeah. you wouldn't use around the church, right. probably. Right. <laughs> Mostly it's verbal yeah. abuse. Yeah. And uh, the only thing they haven't called me yet is that uh, mother thing. Right, yeah. We use good judgment yeah. to know how to handle it. You're the first line of defense. That's right. Yeah. Have you ever thrown a punch? No way. We're, we don't do that. I love people. And for the most part, this group is perfect. It's a rarity when someone gets onto the field. Do you deal with many streakers? I haven't. Yeah. Uh, mostly they jump out on the field to do that, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's got to be a highlight, though. Isn't oh, it? yeah. People like that, you know, and then and they abuse you for trying to stop them. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Is that one of the harder parts of the fan abuse? <laughs> That's right. Now, the seniors love their jobs, and this year they're more excited than ever. You see, this year, after decades of fashion faux pas, the Chicago Cubs ushers have new uniforms. It's perhaps the very thing that's needed to reverse this losing curse. Just ask 76-year-old Ole Lease. I think they're so much of an improvement that it, it's given, a, I think, an entirely different image to the fans. And they're extremely comfortable, and they're very attractive. I love the jackets. The jackets are great. You think this could turn it all around then for the oh, Cubs? Yes. Definitely. And so it's because of these brand new Usher uniforms that you can begin to make plans for a World Series at Wrigley. Now, in preparation for this report, uh, I've studied every internet site on how you reverse the curse, how you turn around the hex. One thing I consistently came across was someone had to drink from the cup of the Cubs catcher. This is Steve Swisher's Swisher, so to speak. And I've got some ice cold Yoo-Hoo, and I am going to drink from the cup. And that should ensure the Cubs win the World Series. If you saw me do this and it made you a little bit thirsty, well, we have a special report now on the beer vendors and their spring training getting ready for Wrigley Field 1999. All right, come on. You guys got to get in shape here. We got a big season ahead of us. We got a lot, a lot of sales to do. I want you to get out there. I want you to hustle. I want you to try hard. I want you to sell everything you got. Now, let's go. Meet Mike Wisniewski. He's in charge of all of the beer vendors who work at Wrigley. All right, you guys ready? One time is it? Game time! Today, he's running some of the new vendors through his own spring training. 3-6, I don't know! You think there's hope? I think there's a lot of hope. We're going to be great on the field this year, and I think our vending staff is going to be just as outstanding in the stands this year. Mike says one of the keys to selling the good beer is putting the idea in people's heads. Therefore, you need to have a good beer call. Call bud here, beer here, beer, beer, beer. Ice cold beer, hey, oh beer, go beer! Now, if you want to be a great beer vendor, you have to have some skills. We're looking for, for men and women who can hustle, who can pour a beer, who've got a good voice. And uh, dancing lessons not required, but they help. As you can see, Mike knows what works. During a typical spring training, Mike runs one of the hardest camps in the majors. During the preseason here, we don't use these during the season because we're professionals by that point. Preparing vendors for everything. Ready? Foul ball! Once in a while, we get a broken bat flying in the stands and you have to be ready. So we're drilling you on that right now. You ready? Here we go. Broken bat! <laughs> Tradition of Wrigley Field, we're looking for, for people who can add ambience to the ballpark. And we're looking for vendors who can, who can add a touch of, touch of class, no, touch no, of history. No, 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 no. And I think we found our staff for this year. And so just how good is this training camp? Well, I put them to the test. How about a beer?
And now, Tom Skilling on La Nina, El Nino, and the Cubs. You, you know, back in 1945, when I first got here, uh, I started looking at that. And I found that in all of the seasons since 1945, in La Nina years, the Cubs won 46% of their games. Now, you know, I, I remember in 1969, that was an El Nino year. And the Cubs... Oh, made... boy. As reversing the curse continues, he's a man with a powerful organ, and he knows how to use it. But can Magic Fingers Pressy help the Cubs make it all the way to the series this year? The sweet, sweet sounds of victory are just moments away. We all do dumb things. Fortunately, paying too much for car insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Geico Direct. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> for maybe five years? For my degree? Here at DeVry, you can earn a four-year degree in just three. Will I learn what I need to know to get a job? Let me get back to you on that. At DeVry, we continuously update our programs with input from businesses. What about job placement? Well, everybody has that. At DeVry, over 9 out of 10 graduates obtain positions in career-related fields. For a higher degree of success, call 1-800-DeVry-11. Introducing Hungry Jack Honey Butter Biscuits. With just a taste of honey butter in each flaky, mouth-watering layer. They're sweet. But not too sweet. New Hungry Jack Honey Butter Biscuits. Overprotective of your food containers? How long will this loan be for? About a day. References? What's that? Congratulations. You've been approved. Switch to new Gladware. At about 50 cents each, you'll get food containers you can use and still afford to lose. Thanks, Mom. Ah, Miss Lonely Hearts, once again, baiting the trap with the special pot and our favorite, Parmesan. Gonna get me the chop. What is that? That is new. Well, that's not the trunk. I know, I know. Come on. Oh, baby, nice shred. Our shred. He's not worthy. Introducing Kraft Shredded Parmesan Cheese. Fresh taste. No grating, no waiting. Can we open this? Oh, shut up and fight. You know, 1998 was a record-breaking season. Sammy Sosa was breaking records. Kerry Wood was breaking records. But a Cubs fan by the name of Ronnie Woo Woo cut a record. It's called Me and You and Ronnie Woo. We had the chance to sit down and talk with Ronnie about his new album. And once you hear it, you'll hope that you can break it too. Never before has a city been so inspired by the vocal croonings of one man. And now, Me and You and Ronnie Woo can be yours on CD. Complete with legendary hits like Dedication. Mark. Grace, Mark, Grace, or Heroes Past. It even includes the smash hit Endurance. For only $20, you can own Me and You and Ronnie Wu, now available in selected music stores. For years, Ronnie Wu has been wooing Cubs fans. With the release of his first CD, Ronnie's on top of the world. Style-wise, he says his music falls between the pipes of Juka Juka and John and Yoko's nude album. I think you can hear why. Me and you and Ronnie Wu take four. Grace, Grace, Grace. It was 40 years ago when Ronnie learned he had something special to share with Cubs fans. Ronnie, when did you realize that the Lord had blessed you with such a beautiful singing voice? It happened back in 1958 or 59, Billy Woods was playing left field. And I go, Billy, oh, Billy, oh, Billy, oh. And this something just came out, and then uh, it just something just came to me out and back. You know, I guess it was a gift from God, you know. Some call Ronnie singing a blessing, while others call it a curse. Regardless, Ronnie's at peace with himself. There are some people who might say that uh, you've got a loose screw. What do you say to them? Well, you know, uh, no one's perfect. And all the elevator don't go to the top. You could put me in that category, but still, uh, we are happy, you know, and uh, 
this is the way life is. We got to go on and enjoy while we, what we have and enjoy it. Now, Ronnie's a showman, and knowing when not to miss an opportunity, he favored us with one of his songs. Mazel, Cubs, number one, World Series, 1999. That was beautiful. Thanks a million, Ron. Thanks for coming out here today. The CD, again, is called Me and You and Ronnie Wu. I'm sure you're going to want to have it in your collection. In 1941, William Wrigley installed an organ at his ballpark, and the Cubs were the first major league team to have an organ played during the games. 58 years later, you can still hear it. Again, some would claim that that's a curse, but don't even try to tell that to Gary Pressey. He's the Cubs organ meister. I definitely disagree with that, because organ music at a ballpark is tradition. You know, you get, you get band practice, people having a hot dog, enjoying themselves in the sun and with the organ in the background. No, it's tradition, and I think it goes hand in hand. 1999 will mark a milestone for Gary. If all goes as scheduled, Old Magic Fingers will play his 1,000th game at the friendly confines. Over the last 13 years, he's been playing the hottest and hippest hits for all the fans to enjoy. We try to uh, combine, try to play something for everybody that would like. But this isn't like organ playing at the mall. Gary has a very specific mission. He tries to generate excitement from the fans and give inspiration to the players. I try to coordinate the names, or like where they're from, and uh, it's, it's spontaneous. But it's not all spontaneous. This winter, Gary has been watching the Cub trades and has come up with some brilliant new songs for the players. Songs like Johnny Be Good for the Cubs' new pitcher, John Lieber. Get it? John Lieber? Johnny be good. We also have a new catcher, Benito Santiago. So for a little stretch, we're going to do Benny and the Jets. And the creative hit list goes on, playing all the greatest hits like Amazing Grace for Mark Grace, and a new number this year, Mr. Sandman for Cubs new pitcher, Scott Sanders. Get it? Sandman, Sanders. Music has been a major part of the atmosphere at Wrigley, so the next time you're out there, be sure you listen carefully to all the songs. Somehow, everything means something. Coming up, who would you like to hear sing the seventh inning stretch? Based on reactions so far, we're so sure you'll love Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Twist Bars, we'll give you your money back if you don't. Just send the bottom panel with the UPC barcode for a full refund. Guaranteed. How's that for a twist? Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Twists. Like them. You'll try them for your money back. You are dog for a pizza delivery. There's a better way to deliver oven fresh pizza. The Domino's Heat Wave, the bag that works like a portable oven for the best tasting Domino's ever. Domino's delivering a million smiles a day. My dentist says this gum is working, cleaning dirty plaque. Gets teeth whiter, too. Uh, whiter teeth, kissable brat. Arm & Hammer gum with baking soda reduces plaque up to 25% and gets teeth whiter. This gum does it all. I knew that. Arm & Hammer gum. Hi, I'm Linda Carter, and I'm here to tell you why ordering your contact lenses direct from Lens Express is such a great idea. We're America's largest contact lens replacement service. Call now for a free catalog and save up to 50% by ordering direct from Lens Express. And I get the exact lenses my doctor prescribed or my money back. Now that's what I call service. I couldn't do without Lens Express. Call this number now for a free Lens Express catalog. Introducing Hungry Jack Honey Butter Biscuits. With just a taste of honey butter in each flaky, mouth-watering layer. They're sweet. But not too sweet. New Hungry Jack Honey Butter Biscuits. Overprotective of your food containers? How long will this loan be for? About a day. References? What's that? Congratulations. You've been approved. Switch to new Gladware. At about 50 cents each, you'll get food containers you can use and still afford to lose. Thanks, Mom. In 1463, William von Schnitzel, a German-born soccer player, wrote in his autobiography called The Curse is the Worst 
about how his soccer team faced one of the worst uh, hexes of all time. They lost 73 games in a row. The way he reversed the curse was to take Bratwurst, attach them to a jumper cables, then attach it to his automobile, and then took the worst and dropped it right into his shorts. I'll do that right now, and you might hear me sing. If you don't hear me sing, you'll hear these people sing the seventh inning stretch. That might hurt as well. All one, a two, a three. Take your to the ball game. It sounded like a brilliant idea, letting different members of the community sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Some of the most honored citizens of Chicago led the singing. Miss America, Kate Schindel, she had a nice voice. However, I think in order for the Cubs to win the World Series, they should really go back to having just one singer. We narrowed down a long list of contestants to a handful of the best voices in our generation. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ground. For assistance, we asked George Maywald, a scholar and maintenance engineer at WGN, to guide us through the vocal evaluation. While George has no formal or informal music training, his first wife played the piano. And George also sets up chairs for the WGN Men's Glee Club that meets on Thursdays. We asked him to listen in and offer his insights. First, a little Dennis Franz. Then Dick Vitale. And finally, Tribune sports writer Jerome Holtzman. Tell you, you know, that was great. You know, those people were bored to sing. Well, I like it very much. <laughs> you yeah, think they were bored to sing? Yeah, yeah, perfect. There seemed to be some consistency in the performers. It seemed like the best singers found the first note right off the bat, and that propelled them into even more greatness. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. <laughs> That's it with you. Uh. Oh, boy. You ever seen anything quite like that? No, never like that, you know. Well, if there'll be weather like that, you know, every day, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to dress. After viewing dozens of tapes, our first runner-up to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game year-round is Tom Skilling. But the number one person on our list, one of the few people who could sing the song in less than 20 seconds, a man who could reverse any curse, he's a world-renowned tenor who will perform on opening day, ladies and gentlemen, the coach. One, and a two, and a three. special ladies and gentlemen thanks a million for tuning in we've officially reversed all the curses here at wrigley so nothing will ever go wrong again i give you my personal guarantee you can count on it i'm paul conrad thanks a million for watching we'll see you this year at the world series ladies and gentlemen bye bye tune in next year i think we might need to redo that one Oh, what a mess. <laughs>